Hello, everybody. This is Tina and Isabel. And hello. I, hello. <laughs> and I recently had a request to talk about the Akashic Records and particular focus on the, the personal Akashic Records versus the collective Akashic Records and what the connection is between them. And and there are people who probably know quite a lot about the Akashic Records, and then there's probably other people who go, yeah, I've heard that term. What does it mean? So I think I want to just define the whole thing, and then we can address that particular question. So when Isabel and I were talking earlier, planning to, to do this, I was talking about, you know, she, she was saying, I don't really know much about the Akashic Records. And I said to her, you probably know a lot more than you realize you know. And then I was thinking when I, for years, when I would hear the term, the image that it gave me was some kind of bizarre little scroll that might be sort of infinite and intricate and have all this information on it, <laughs> floating somewhere off in space in some really hidden part of the universe. And if people who could read the Akashic Records would find, knew how to find that scroll, they had the secret initiation codes and they could go in there and they could plumb those Akashic Records. <laughs> yes, and I was picturing a big library with like a little volume for each soul. Oh, yeah. Picture. I had a whole different picture than you did. Yeah, well, I like, I like your picture. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, so do I, because I love yes. libraries. That's a whole other story. Yeah, see, see, for me, I, I never thought about it as being for every soul. So you're thinking more about what what um, person who asked about this said about you know the personal Akashic records. You've got your little your little personalized volume, whereas I was thinking more about gee, you could find out anything you wanted to find out about anything that had ever happened anywhere in the world. So I wasn't really thinking about me when I thought about that at all. <laughs> oh, interesting. And is it just the world? Is it just like no, the, the whole exist, all of existence, yes. But for me, I think most of my curiosities would have been the world and history and stuff like that. Yeah, that probably sounds more interesting, actually. That's just what was going on. The rest of it is just kind of, you know, cosmic gossip. Right. And again, I also thought, well, it was a goofy term and um, might not be that really that important in some ways. Now, what I know of what the Akashic Records are, I mean, I'm even asking, can you read the Akashic Records? And read, even the term read is a little bit of a misnomer because the better question is, can you perceive the Akashic Records? Yeah. Because the Akashic Records are everywhere. It is the imprint of the, the actions and operations of existence throughout all of time, which exists now anyway, now we live we're living in this third dimensional world in these th three dimensional lives so that while we're moving around in our physical bodies we can move up and down in one direction the vertical direction we can go from the front to the back in the other direction and from right to left on either side so we've got those three dimensions of movement we are not in control of our movement through time we are only ever able to perceive the current moment but fourth dimensional beings and fourth dimensional consciousness, which happens at us when, whenever someone reaches a certain spiritual level of consciousness, either temporarily or permanently, is aware of all of time, just as though it all exists right now, the same way that space, all of space around you right now, you know, is always there. We're always aware of, the, of those three dimensions, those three mm -hmm. directions. Mm -hmm. So... There's one way in which Akashic Records, reading the Akashic Records or perceiving the Akashic Records is connected to perceiving from fourth dimensional consciousness. There's another way in which everything that anyone thinks or feels, anything that ever happens, always leaves a certain imprint or impression around it in, in the collective subconsciousness. So our personal subconscious has a record of all of our own experiences. And, you know, they've even studied the brain and the conscious mind may be able to be aware of maybe, and I'm just giving an estimate, but it's, a, it's an estimate of the contrast between the two. I don't know the precise number off the top of my head, but maybe the subconscious mind can be aware of 17 things. That, the conscious mind can be aware of the maximum of 17 things at once. The subconscious mind is constantly aware of at least 10,000 things at once that are happening around you right now. So the subconscious has a massive capacity to store, to perceive, and that's just in the present. Mm -hmm. 
But what is also stored in our own subconscious is a perfect record of everything we've ever experienced in this lifetime. And beyond our physical experience, the subconscious also has a perfect record of everything we've experienced throughout time, everything that's happened in our past. And so that is really one way to express that personal Akashic record. It, it's it stored... So is it only the past or can you be aware of, because time really is. Time, yes. Right? Like, are you aware of everything that's happened in the past or are you aware of everything that's happened in the future? You're, you, uh, the, the subconscious is aware of, of, of that as well. It's accessed a little bit differently in our current mental, emotional, physical bodies. So some, when you, when a person opens up their ability to perceive the, the past and that goes beyond this lifetime, they may not, and usually do not open up their ability to perceive their future or future lifetimes, but that opens up most people that will open up separately. Right. And aren't future lifetimes, I mean, unless you believe absolutely that everything is, is sort of right. like fate. Like, yes. It gets very mind boggling because then you get into quantum physics and exactly. have so several different types. potential future lifetimes that different parts of us will experience. So it, it starts to get really overwhelming for most, for most minds. Yes, yes. And and it starts to deviate slightly off of our topic, but it is that is a that is related, and that is a good question actually. Okay. And I mean, you and I have speak have spoken about my memory of my future life. Yes. And yes. you know, I always take that with a bit of a grain of salt, but it's been it's been pretty it's been pretty persistent. It's been there since my early twenties, and then sometimes I get other other bits and pieces of it, and. It may be reliable because I've remembered a lot of my future in this lifetime. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I'm remembering that as well, but we'll see when I get there. And by then, will I remember that I, rem that I saw it in my past life? <laughs> yeah, really. See when I get there. What was that again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't even remember five minutes ago, so <laughs> right. you're yes. doing very well. <laughs> Yeah, well, I have a very retentive memory with my, because I have Moon in Pisces and it's trying Neptune and conjunct Mercury Venus and my Mercury is my ruling planet. It's, Saturn stabilizes it, so my Moon is really very good at, at at holding impressions and doing it in a reasonably stable way. Huh. Anyway, <clears throat> again, we digressed a little bit. <laughs> Gee, that's a <laughs> so, surprise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was talking about, about our own personal subconscious memory banks, the, the physical or the greater collective existence also has its subconscious memory banks. And everything in existence can be divided into two halves, which is the conscious half and the, the subconscious or unconscious half. Okay. Everything is one or the other. And all physical objects are subconsciousness. They are the collective subconscious. Wait, did you just say, I want to make sure I got this. You said mm -hmm. all physical objects mm -hmm. are subconsciousness? Yes, they're, they're, but they're subcon they are the divine subconsciousness. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it's matter, which is, which is uh, yeah. energy, which is... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And it's interesting that matter is M-A-T-T-E-R, and matter, mother, is M-A-T-E-R because the subconscious is connected to the, the, the feminine principle or the mother principle of existence. Mm -hmm. So when we say this is this, this table is, is physical matter, we really mean that it's, it's the mother principle or the divine feminine principle that has, has um, concentrated itself into this apparent form that we perceive. Right. I just realized that the term, it doesn't matter. <laughs> mm hmm as soon as you were starting to talk about matter, I immediately went to, it doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> I'll leave that for now. Yeah. Now, in terms of the, the sort of the subtler physical principles of reality, what's known as the etheric level of existence is what really imprints impressions and memories and emotion. So there are a lot of if, if, there's a, if there's any concretized form of the Akashic Records, it would be the etheric imprints that, that, that occur in specific places. So that's one way to read, or as I'd prefer to, use, to say, perceive the Akashic Records, is to go to a place, and you know, it might be interesting to go to a place that has some, kind of, some type of historic significance. 
or even an old abandoned house or something and yeah. to learn how to, to use it as a way to experiment, to learn to open up your own inner senses, your own inner voice, your, your, your perceptions, because some people are going to hear the Akashic Records. Some people are going to read it as far as see it. Some people are going to feel it. We all have different ways that our, our minds or our brain really perceives its capacity to interface with that oneness and to, you know, and to perceive the etheric impressions that are, that are existing in a, in a specific location. Now, you can also access any place, any time through other intuitive means. But anytime anybody does any kind of intuitive work, they, they are where they are accessing information about somebody else or about something or about something that has happened or potentially could happen. All of that basically comes down to reading the Akashic records. <laughs> so question, um, as you know, yes. uh, often, I will walk into an environment and I just get a feeling. Yes, that's right. And is that what you're talking about? And that yes. often happens even like with old objects. Right, yes, exactly. Like what you're I, talking I about. get creeped, I, and it's not really very sharp. I couldn't tell oh. you exactly what happened, but I can tell you that something creepy happened, right? Or there's like a creepy environment, mm -hmm. or. <clears throat> Just going to certain places, I'll definitely get like a feeling of it. That's right. And and I'm I'm not great at this, so I can either the feeling will be either a good feeling or not a good feeling. Yes. And yeah, and that's sort of it's sort of a basic standard instinctive intuitive ability that a lot of people have. Some people more than others. If we concentrate on it with our rational mind staying in control and study it more and ask certain questions you can develop the ability to get a lot more information than that should you so choose mm. now at the same time you get that sort of creepy feeling and you've got you've got certain things in your astrological chart that indicate that you're you didn't come into this lifetime with very with with totally strong boundaries no, no. So you want to make sure. It very nicely. <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> yes. Yeah. There are probably yeah. other words for that. Yes. Right. Which I won't so, say. But. And some people are like that, and so this is where it, it's it's always better to develop spiritually and develop your spiritual understanding and your philosophical understanding than to go all goofy about trying to develop your psychic ability. Oh as well, as you know, I've been avoiding developing my psychic ability for the aforementioned reason. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and of course, pretty, I'm, pretty I'm scary saying, out there. Hmm? It it's, gets pretty scary out there with no boundaries, and you're developing abilities, and you get visitors, and <laughs> right. up. It's, it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we need a we need a map of existence if we're going to go traveling in this in that kind of world. We need an understanding of how these things work, and we need an ability to to maintain the integrity of our vehicles. So that's your your conscious personality, your physical body, your empathic capabilities. All of these things need to maintain their strength and their integrity so that you don't have unpleasant experience. Yeah. And if you start out with not having great boundaries, then, you know, it, it's, it's, that's why it feels creepy to you. Yeah. And that's not something if somebody has that feeling that they should judge. And on the other hand, sometimes people get paranoid about anything to do with psychic stuff and very scared because they're imagining it's always going to be creepy and it's always going to come and try and attack you. And that's not necessarily the case either. Oh, yeah, uh, no, no, I, I, yeah, but it's still always better, once again, to develop your spiritual self first, and then if psychic stuff is, is a part of some kind of use, or some kind of useful purpose in your life, then that would be something that would naturally grow out of that. And of course, certain people start out in their lifetime with the natural psychic abilities turned right on and have to learn how to manage all of that. And once again, it's still good to have the spiritual training. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes because I didn't, I'm, I'm more in that category. And it's not that I had poor boundaries. It's just that I had this, you know, this natural capacity and I needed to learn how to, how to utilize it constructively rather than have it overwhelm me. <laughs> things happen yeah 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 so 
the uh, I'm trying to say one other what else I wanted to say about this. Well, the term Akashic records. I, I, I've clarified the second word, which is record, or to read to read the Akashic records. The record, of course, is what the subconscious does. Is it stores things? Everything gets recorded all the time. You know, there's people can get paranoid about Big Brother watching us. Well, Big Brother has always been watching us because <laughs> every big sister has always been watching us. Actually, oh yeah. <laughs> That I've always felt. Sure. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 you have. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. So there's always something that is, is recording everything. And, it, you know, from a subconscious level, from the level of, the, of what we're calling the Akashic Records in this call or this, you know, this talk, is um, it, it, it's, there's no secrets. And at a subconscious level, there are no secrets ever. Nothing can be ever. hidden. No. But, be, but because for most of us this level of, of subconscious awareness is hidden from us then everybody can pretend and and sneak around for a while and hide things but you, you never hide it forever it's always no, you don't. <laughs> yeah but to go into but the behave term, yourself yeah <laughs> right behave yourself because it's all in the akashic records <laughs> yeah. somebody will find it somewhere at some point and boy would you be embarrassed <laughs> right, right, yeah. So, so the, the 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 term records is 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 referring to that. Everything leaves an impression. The term akashic is is um, from the word akasha, which is one of the five elements of Hindu philosophy, and that and really that's the, the Western world has been using those those particular terms for oh I, I'd say um, at least or almost 150 years, maybe longer, when, the, when, the, when Eastern, um, when certain Eastern principles and teachings were being brought into the West mm -hmm. in, the, in the 19th century. But these principles are, those terms may have been, you know, brought in relatively recently, but the underlying principles have always existed. So the five elements are Akasha, earth, water, air, fire, whatever order you want to describe them in. And all of these principles, first of all, the four elements are, all, as we know, if, if we have any interest in astrology, they're always all being used in astrology. And they have psychological meanings and a certain energetic form of expression. When we, when we talk about these five elements from a non-astrological perspective, we're really talking about five non-physical forms of energy expression. Mm -hmm. And the, the Akasha is, the, is this very pure source energy. So everything comes out initially as Akasha. All of these five elements have traditional symbols associated with them. And the traditional symbol associated with Akasha is the blue-violet egg. Mm -hmm. And the blue-violet is, is coming out of that darkness and it's just sort of barely visible as it's coming out of the darkness. And it's, it's what gives birth to everything. Everything is hiding inside that egg. The other four elements that go to form more of the basic principles or the basic fundamental of principles of existence before they take concrete physical form, those are, those are the four elements that come out of Akasha. So to say the Akashic records, we're talking about forms of energy or consciousness that are stored at this very fundamental um, level of creation. That, and creation is an ongoing process. Creation is not something that happened at, at the beginning of Genesis. It's something that is happening all the time. Yeah. And there's a fundamental Akashic energy that both is the source from which everything comes and the source which then records all of expression through itself. So that's where the term Akashic or Akashic comes from. So to perceive the Akashic records, it's helpful to, to know these things. Now, it's, um, you know, the, the connection between the, the personal Akashic records and the, and the collective Akashic records, really the connection is always through the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And as we go in th through our own subconscious, our own subconscious is the doorway to that greater subconsciousness. So I remember years ago when I was trying to teach basic spiritual principles, and I also used it with some of my astrology students, 
I had this little cartoon called Herbie's Journey and it had a stick figure and the stick figure had stuck to the top of its head the opening of a balloon and then the balloon ballooned up and that balloon was a symbol of the of the subconscious and I would talk about different things that happen when we when we go to sleep and we dream then Herbie was floating inside the balloon instead of standing there with the balloon attached to the top of his head um, the the balloon also and I had um, a line through the center of it that was like of a wavy line and up above all above everything was this ocean which is the ocean of the collective unconscious or the collective subconsciousness that uh, there's the the deeper piece of our own subconsciousness is is completely tied into so all the information from that great oneness and our information from our personal subconsciousness are floating and flowing back and forth between each other through this watery form of consciousness in the subconscious. So when we gain access to our own subconscious capacity to remember even greater memories from our childhood, memories from other lifetimes, that can open up doorways to get, gain understanding of the collective, the collective or greater Akashic records. Sometimes people learn intuitively how to perceive certain things in the outside world that don't have to do with our own personal history and they open up that part of their intuitive understanding first and then they, they find their way to their own little herbie balloon and start remembering their own past lives and things like that remembering past lives um is very valuable to certain people and completely unnecessary for other people and it's not something to wallow in or you know get get too involved in unless it has value for your own development now in this lifetime sometimes people you know get all over enamored of all of that stuff but other times it's incredibly valuable whether to bring certain talents and skills back into this lifetime certain beneficial teachings and memories into this lifetime and to heal traumas that are still really limiting us in this lifetime so those are reasons to really explore those that our own personal akashic records but I, I it's not necessary for everybody here's my question uh before you said some people will explore the outside world around them yeah through the, the what, I, what i mean by that is the akashic level or the, the you know the impressions could of, you give me like a bad example of that just like as a concrete oh well, well yeah here's a good great great bad example i'm terrible at bad examples but this one <laughs> this is about you have, bad no example it's a bad example so you don't have to feel any pressure but i can't even come with any example when you ask me for a bad example that's the problem but right now i have an excellent bad example oh, excellent. <laughs> which is somebody who gets in really into this the scary tv shows and the creepy stories and you know all the all the ghost stories and decides to go wandering around at a graveyard at night and suddenly starts to be able to look at the gravestones and 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 be able to tell the stories of all these people and they somehow know this was what their lives were like this was what was going on here that would be a, a, you know an opening up of all of that, that that just happens through a person's intuition and it would have to be something like that i thought for some reason when you said it uh before I thought you were talking about like somebody that becomes like a real specialist at some area of life, like geology or whatever. That, oh, you they, yes. actually, like, that would be, a, that could very much be a way for it to open up also, actually. Yeah. Because one yeah. of the okay. things, one of the things that's really essential in order to get this knowledge is concentration, paying attention to something. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Okay. So that's, yeah. That's why I was saying, if you go into an environment, you feel either a good vibe or a creepy vibe. If you ask yourself more questions about that and concentrate on what you're feeling, you will start to, it will start to unveil itself to you. So well, yes, a person who is specialized in a specific concrete area of life, the more they pay attention to that, the more they can open up that you know, non-physical yeah. understanding. Yeah, because you're, you're basically, what you're doing is you're building a muscle. Yep. Uh, which is concentration, and I guess you can then use that muscle for other things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you remember uh, that I told you, and I'm not going to mention the city, but I had to fly into a city. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And as we were, do you remember this? I uh, remember, yes. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. We were circling, mm -hmm. the, you know, flying to the airport, and I remember I just got this. Yes. I keep saying I, it was a smell, but it wasn't a literal smell. Right. Um, but I just got hit with this 
profound feeling. Yes. And it, and it was a million images that went by so quickly. I couldn't even grab one of them, but I just saw them all at the same time. And there were so yes. many. Yes. Yeah. And it was what I called it at the time. Remember, it was really, really, it really hit me. And I, and I still, to this day, remember it, which is it was just the smell of violent death. Yeah. Do you remember yep. me telling you about that? Oh, I do remember you telling me about it. Yes, I remember you and telling me about it a few times. There's an imprint in that city. I'm not going to mention yes. it because anybody living in that city, I don't know. <laughs> right, yes, I'm very but, smart. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just saying that that city always creeps me out, all of yes. it. Yes, yes. The whole thing. And I'd never been there before, but it was my very first trip as we were circling, uh, just circling the airport. I remember it just hit me. And Yeah. Wow. It, was, yeah. it came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it. Didn't know mm -hmm. what was happening, but there it was. Yes, it's true. It's yeah. almost like that. I was greeted with that as we got yeah. into the airspace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like a yeah. And you know, what's interesting is that in terms of the Akashic Records again, which I still think is a little bit of a campy term, got to be honest, but <laughs> they're, they're so infinite that we do have to pay either a consciously focused attention to things in order to get specific information, or we have to have something that's near the surface of our own subconscious mind that, that has an affinity for something, whether it's a positive or a negative affinity, some kind of history with, with something connected to what you're perceiving. So you're, you're, the, the upper level of your subconscious, where, there's some, where the sun gets into the water, that it had something that resonated with that violent death element of that city because somebody else could have could, could have come into that city and they would have been focused on a completely different oh, other yeah. element. Absolutely. Yeah. And that makes sense with yeah. Pluto soul planet. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Know, yeah. My particular history. Yes. 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 That would make sense. Yes. And I always had the feeling you had some unpleasant experience in that city in another lifetime too. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you ever tell me that before? And I, forgot. I did. Yeah. Yeah. That was a while ago, but I did. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Funny. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, oh, another thing about what I was mentioning, some people will see, will read the, the Akashic records. Others will hear. There are, there are five non-physical senses that correspond to our five physical senses. So you were talking about it's like a smell of violent death. You didn't physically smell it although some people will actually get physical smells. And all of that is just the brain interpreting things a certain yeah. way. And I did get, like I said, flashes. Like it was yeah. like a montage that went by really fast. Wow, like yeah. Pictures, 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 like tons of them just mm -hmm. all happening at the same time. And it yes. was like, yeah, I got that. I did get a sort of, at the, at the edge of my eyesight, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All well, all of these things are kind of at the edge of our senses anyway. So consciousness mm -hmm. is like that because it's our edge yeah. of our conscious awareness. Yeah. 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 And when you said you feel something, that's, this, that's the, that's the, that's the non-physical sense of touch, even though it comes across as emotions that, yeah. and that's what people talk about when they say they're an empath or, you know, it's called clairsentience when you feel, you, you feel something. Yeah. Yeah, that well, that one, I, that one is very familiar to me. Yes, me too. Yeah, the feeling of something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes people just have direct perception. It doesn't really come through any particular sense. It just comes through an automatic knowing. Hmm. So it bypasses those hmm. those five senses. Hmm. Interesting. It's kind of interesting too. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anything else that's coming to mind about this particular. Well, I wanted, so um, I just wanted to make sure that you talked enough about the collect. I guess you read, you did, the collective, uh, mm -hmm. the collective as opposed to the personal. We talked a bit about the personal, but I guess the collective is just, if you go there, you can, you, can, you know. Yeah, and, you, and you, you, you. History is written by the, the victor, but I guess there's a way of finding out what really happened. Yes, there absolutely is. There totally yeah. is. Yeah. And we don't have to go to a physical place either. No, no, no. It can help if we're a beginner in learning how to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> but it's really not necessary to actually go there. Yeah. Well, because again, if everything, like time, space. Is, yeah. 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 And then, then this, on a subconscious level, everything is connected. 
exactly. There's no separation. So That's the better way right it. now, what's going on in, in Pluto, the planet Pluto, or if you want to know what went on 10,000 years ago or 10,000 years from now on the planet Pluto, probably wouldn't be very interesting, but you could find out if you wanted to. <laughs> mm, okay. Sure. I, I have my own relationship with Pluto, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm going to leave Pluto up there sort of, you know, <laughs> laughing, saying, ha, you don't think I'm a planet? Watch this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that probably sums it up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah.